This intriguing little device with a very dim blinking LED is a metaphysical device called a Schumann resonator. And the idea is that it resonates, a, it will oscillate at a very specific frequency around about 7.83 hertz that you can tune with a little potentiometer here. And it emulates an earth frequency. Now, to explain that, we have to go to the notepad. So let me zoom in this and I'll show you what we're talking about here. So in the 1950s, a scientist called Winifred Otto Schumann uh, theorized that between the Earth and the outer ionosphere around the Earth, there could be some sort of resonant frequency. And it turns out he was right. And the base of this is that if the Earth could be treated as one electrode, a sort of ground plane, so to speak, then the outer charged ionosphere uh, acts as a sort of electrical layer and there is a cavity of fairly consistent size between them. And this cavity is plucked by bolts of lightning that are always happening around the world. And when that happens, you get uh, electromagnetic waveform resonates around it. And there are other harmonics as well, but the most prominent recognized one is 7.83 hertz. And in modern science, this is actually used to monitor activity in the ionosphere and the and between in that cavity between the ionosphere and Earth, because it gives a good indication at any given time of lightning strikes around the world and other scientific information. OK, let's take a closer look at the coil. So since this unit is basically a small circuit for driving the coil at one end and then what is effectively a single ended antenna spiraled round to give it good length, um, we can take a look directly at the circuit board end, which is blowing up for scale here. Uh, here is a NE555 classic chip that can be programmed as a sort of timer or oscillator. We've got the support circuitry around that. We've got the USB port noting that this does not have the 5.1K resistors that are needed to identify it to some equipment. So it will have to go into a sort of dumb USB power supply. And we have a little LED to blink and show you and also possibly help you. You couldn't really calibrate it using that. However, what you can calibrate it with, if you had an accurate timing source and you wanted to get it exact, you could go between the USB shell and the middle connection uh, onto this antenna, or even anywhere on the antenna probably, because that is effectively connected to the output of the 555. So let's cut straight to the circuit board, uh, since that really answers the story of all the circuitry. So we'll do that right now. OK, let's explore. So it's a very standard configuration for a 555, which basically is a capacitor, a timing capacitor, and it charges it via resistors until it reaches the trigger and the threshold point. And the internal configuration of this, the trigger and the threshold are joined here, but you can actually use it in many different ways. It's an amazingly useful chip. You find them everywhere. It's one of the oldest chips. Uh, it goes back, oh, blimey. I can't even remember the date this was launched, but it's an old, old integrated circuit, one of the first integrated circuits, but is still using things like streetlight controllers and stuff like that. It's very odd where it finds its way. But uh, it charges up this capacitor in this configuration until it reaches a threshold point, and then the output changes state. When it does change state, it pulls between positive and negative. It uh, also turns on an internal transistor, which then discharges the capacitor and uh, until it reaches the uh, a lower threshold point and then the cycle starts again, it just oscillates. In this uh, situation, the capacitor effectively charges. This is odd, this diode configuration. So effectively, between this 9.1K, the capacitor is mainly charging through that, bypassing this part of the circuitry via the diode to charge up. Once it reaches that charge state, and this goes to the zero volt rail, it then effectively forms a sort of closed loop with these resistors and the capacitor. So effectively, this is the charge resistor and this adjustable arrangement is the discharge resistor. And it's got a 5.1K resistor in series with a 10K resistor. And uh, that uh, means that in a midpoint position of about 5K, you're getting roughly the same as the charge one. So they're kind of balancing it, but you won't get a perfect square wave. Now, the output of this 
is doing two things. Oh, this is uh, used as a little, this capacitor here is used as a little filter for internal voltage reference. Usually you have a capacitor across the power rails too, the 555. They've not done that. However, there is a very dim LED. That's the little LED pulsing there which has a 5.1k resistor, so like it's a fraction of a milliamp that's going through at very low, and it just shows the output is active. I think it's mainly just to say, I am doing something. Now, the, in this instance, the output is connected. Keep in mind, this is a square-ish wave, and it is connected to the end of a long antenna, and it will effectively be radiating a signal. That could also, I mean, the... I suppose at that frequency, the length and 10 isn't super critical, but ideally in a resonant system, you would have, well, this isn't resonant, but for, for optimum results, you would have an antenna that is matched roughly to the base frequency. Other versions of this have a resistor to pass more current through this because the 555 is capable of syncing and sourcing about 100 milliamps. And other ones still, they have the output going to a transistor which literally pulses a big coil at really high current to create a strong magnetic field. I'm not sure the pros and cons of different var variations, but this is the absolute simplest. And I guarantee that this will, at that frequency there, this being pulsed, it will be radiating a very low level, uh, sort of effectively a radio signal that you can tune to the desired 7.83 hertz. The uh, other thing that has made these kind of, shall we say, a quack product, is that the 7.83 hertz is very close to the base frequency. Let me just uh, focus down on this and bring this back in so you get some to look at here. So I'll just focus down to here if that did focus. Uh, but the base frequency of the alpha brain waves is round about 8 hertz. So because of that, people speculate that our brains may be in tune with the ionosphere and it's an earth frequency. And I have to be honest, it's a, it's a bit of fun. Some people enjoy them. It, as long as it's cheap and you're getting pleasure out of playing with things like this and, and believing it's doing something, then I'm absolutely fine with that. The only time I have a problem is when people sell big fancy ones at astronomical prices and claim they cure things that are better treated medically. We're talking the big C here. Uh, false claims like that, medical claims, bother me a lot in this regard. But having said that, this is in the category of metaphysics. Effectively, I kind of think of metaphysics as unproven physics. And to be fair, electricity and magnetism used to be in the category of metaphysics too. And things were proven later on that were correlated. So you literally can't rule anything out. You, you can't just make assumptions that this is just a quack device because ultimately in the future, they may discover there is some correlation to, to the behavior of humans like moons and things like that, how the moon can affect human behavior and things like that. It's very odd. It's all a very balanced system. But um, it's interesting. And if you want one to play with, even just as a novel ornament, um, they're quite cheap to buy. This one came from AliExpress. It wasn't expensive. I'll provide a link should you wish to buy one to play with, or you might just get into a, at a deeper level and do some experiments and see if you enjoy that experience. But there we have it. This is a human resonator based on actual real science, but with a slight metaphysical twist. <laughs>